Flying a garbage ship wasn't the sort of thing a cadet imagined himself doing at the academy. No, those fantasies usually involved a shiny new ship and a grand space battle that the cadets were the dashing heroes of. Of course, those fantasies were reserved for the cadets from the nobility. For a commoner, they would always be just that. Fantasies. In other, less backwards places, a drone ship would be handling mundane tasks like hauling the garbage. Here in the Principality, however, people like Wyatt were the drones. The job itself wasn't that bad. There was no smell, as Wyatt rarely had to exit his cockpit. He just flew towards the inhospitable rock that had been colonized for the sole purpose of turning garbage like his into useful compost, dropped off his container of bio-waste, and went back to his space station for more. He had done this for the past two years now. Not once in all that time had anything remotely interesting happened to Wyatt. He had assumed that trend would hold today, but then his sensors started beeping. Warp signatures detected rang the crackly voice of his ship's archaic computer. Warp signatures? Out here? The Principality was a backwater. Wyatt's post was a backwater of that backwater. For something other than a garbage ship to be flying in the same system as him, and at warp no less, something was going on. Wyatt hit the switch for the external cameras, something he never had any reason to do. Computer, can you get a visual of the vessel? Affirmative. Wyatt's screen lit up and he saw a small but familiar outline. Magnify image. The outline grew, and Wyatt immediately knew why he recognized it. That's the royal yacht! He was barely able to finish the sentence before his heart sank into his feet as he saw an explosion go off just a handful of kilometers away from the royal yacht. The yacht had its point defense systems online, which meant that it was under attack. Someone was attacking the royal family. Computer, get me a visual on the other vessel. Unable to comply. No other heat signatures detected. What? Computer, track the trajectory of the missiles back to their source. The old computer was painfully slow in performing the tasks, but eventually it chimed calculations complete. Display visual and magnify. It was difficult to see at first. It was black as the void and only visible when you noticed the system's red dwarf's light faintly reflecting off of it. The ship was quite some distance away, and his ship's external camera was ancient, so he could barely make out an outline of what appeared to be a corvette-sized warship. Its silhouette was vaguely in the shape of an arrowhead, with two almost invisible lights coming out its back end, presumably its engines. If it was keeping up with the royal yacht, arguably the fastest ship in the Principality, then it was more advanced than anything in the royal fleet. He couldn't guess as to why the ship was attacking the royal yacht. Computer, track that ship. Understood. Wyatt tried to calm the space station, but the black ship was jamming transmissions. He wasn't in much of a position to help. His ship was essentially just a cockpit with oversized engines. Its sole purpose was to mag-lock itself to the back of cargo containers and carry them to a destination. Its only armament was a small point defense cannon for destroying asteroids and it had no armor or other defenses to speak of besides the standard navigational EM field. Of course, he had to try. This was the royal yacht after all. He punched an intercept course into the computer, and the old engines roared with new life. It was a bumpy ride at max speed, but the rickety old ship held together. The black ship must have been built for stealth, as it produced almost no heat signature for his sensors to detect. The computer had been tracking the vessel's position visually since it had located it, so its stealth didn't pose to much of a problem at the moment. He charged up the point defense cannon and nearly fell out of his chair with fright when the warning siren sounded and the cannon opened fire and destroyed a missile at a distressingly close distance. Evidently, their sensors detected me. The ship threw a few token missiles Wyatt's way, but it didn't appear too concerned and remained focused on the yacht. Wyatt might have been offended, but he was too relieved that his point defense cannon had managed to destroy the three incoming missiles sent his way. It occurred to Wyatt that he had no plan. Then he heard a small alarm go off. The cargo container had been hit by some shrapnel and was venting air. Specifically, methane was venting. I guess I have my plan now. He punched some numbers through the computer, and his idea appeared to be somewhat possible— he just had to get very dangerously close. 
At the very least, he might be able to buy time for his commander at the space station to realize what was going on and send some help. He would only have one shot, so he better not miss. He laid in the new course and pushed the engines well beyond their safety levels. He was getting very, very close, for outer space anyway. Computer lock the point defense cannon on the cargo container and open fire five seconds after maglock is disengaged. Command processed. He was well into mass driver range and he did a few evasive maneuvers to avoid a some incoming mass driver rounds. By the time whoever was in charge realized something serious was going down, it was far too late. Computer release maglock! His stomach almost flew out of his throat as he slammed the ship in full reverse. One, two, three, four, five. The cannon opened fire and hit the cargo container a split second after the container had collided with the black ship. An explosion followed, and although muted by the lack of oxygen outside the container, the black ship broke off its pursuit. Wyatt wasn't sure if he had caused any significant damage, but it had evidently been enough to spook the commander of the ship. The black ship limped away like a wounded predator, fires still raging on its hull. Wyatt was immediately hailed by the yacht. A tall man with dark gray hair and the colorless irises of cybernetic eyes appeared on his screen. This is Ship Commander Redford of His Majesty's Starship Royal Favor. State your identity. Wyatt Staples, Warrant Officer, 3rd Fleet, 2nd Frontier Corps. A commoner? Well, I guess you'll have to do. Obviously. Who else would be flying a bucket like this? Oh, and you're welcome. Warrant Officer was the highest rank a commoner could achieve in the Royal Fleet, and even then that was reserved exclusively for pilots. Whether or not a pilot was a warrant officer was a good way to tell if they were a commoner or not. At your service, Commander. How'd you get the ship to break off? Our sensors indicate no armament other than a PD cannon. I, uh, threw my garbage at it and it exploded. What? Lots of natural combustibles produced by bio waste. I launched the container at the ship, then I ignited it. That's some trick. Not bad for a commoner, huh? The commander tapped some control panels around him a few times, then his face scrunched up. I can't raise the space station, our comms must be down. Try hailing them yourself. Wyatt hailed his space station and got no response. A little worm of a bad feeling wiggled its way into his chest. The black ship wasn't jamming him anymore, which meant that he should be able to send his message, and he knew damn well that the comms officer on the space station had absolutely nothing better he could be doing instead of answering his message. So, either he was being deliberately ignored, or the station was under attack. Commander Redford chimed in. Can't raise them, huh? I worried as much. Who's your commanding officer? Wyatt calmed back. My CO is Lieutenant Commander Thomas Kasten. Kasten? Damn. House Kasten is a subordinate of House Draymore. They'd have sided against us. That kid must have pissed someone off to be way out here. They probably offered to let him out of the doghouse if he looked the other way. What do you mean, sir? Just what I needed. There's been a coup, son. Duke Draymore of Camrim has stormed the Council of Nobles and the Royal Palace. All he needed to make his government official was the prince's consent. Fortunately, he escaped. He's on another ship heading for loyalist forces. We're transporting a VIP to him. I was hoping this system was remote enough that we could safely resupply at your station. That Kasten bastard must have signaled our position. Little Weasel probably thought it would get him out of this posting, I bet. Yeah, that sounds like Commander Kasten. Wyatt's mind raced as he absorbed the gravity of the situation. He was just a commoner. He never imagined being caught in the midst of a political maelstrom that could shape the future of the principality. Yet here he was, holding the comms with a high-ranking noble amidst a coup d'etat. Commander Redford's next words snapped Wyatt back to reality. Warrant Officer Staples, we can't linger here. We're moving to rendezvous with the prince. Given your creative problem-solving, I'd like to extend an invitation for you to join us. Your knowledge of this area could prove valuable. Wyatt hesitated. Joining the Loyalist forces meant abandoning his routine life, but he had just defended the royal family ship. There was no going back to being just a garbage hauler after today. I accept, Commander. What are your orders? Plot a course to follow us. Maintain a close formation. We'll need to jump to FTL as soon as we're clear of the system's gravity well.
As the coordinates from the royal favor beamed over, Wyatt set his ship's path. It wasn't designed for combat, but it had maneuverability that could keep pace with the royal yacht. The small fleet, now two ships strong, moved towards the edge of the system. Every second that passed was tense. Wyatt expected another attack, but none came. Perhaps the explosion he caused had sent a message, or maybe the attackers were licking their wounds. As they finally broke free from the system's gravitational pull, Wyatt's ship shuddered into FTL alongside the royal favor. He couldn't shake off the feeling that his life had changed forever.